You know, there are lots of occasions where a man has to stand for long periods of time at a parade or at a funeral or in the mall when your wife says, now you just stand right there. <laughs> but as you get older, you find you're a lot happier sitting down. That's because there's a lot less that you'll stand for. <laughs> well, here's a nifty trick. Get yourself a bar stool with a little back on it, like that. They're not easy to find. I must have tried on a hundred bar stools before I found this baby. <laughs> then what you want to do is measure right around yourself, around your knees, including the back. Then you go down to your local fat guy clothing store and get yourself matching clothes in that size. And if the guy asks you, how come you need pants that big? You tell him because they need to go around your stool. <laughs> Use a barrel hoop as a belt so the pants will keep their shape. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now you can look like you're standing tall, <laughs> but in fact, you're sitting pretty. this week. Harold's done some deal with one of the universities, McGill U or Carleton U or who asked you? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, they're doing this experiment where we got to all be communists or something, so not too excited about driving lattas and making beer out of potatoes. <laughs> I mean, what do you call it? Like spud light? Or, I don't know. Akared, yeah. Akared, yeah. I have your comrade uniform right here. Huh? You have to be like me. Well, luckily, Harold, that's impossible. <laughs> We all have to dress the same. It's in the rules. Oh, Harold. <laughs> How did you get us into this anyway? Well, it was the political science dean. He, he got a grant to evaluate different forms of government. This is, this is a sociological experiment. Well, so are you. <laughs> well, why does everybody have to suffer? Not for free. We're getting, yeah, we're getting compensated. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's oh. really very simple. Oh. Everything's based on everyone being treated the same. Uh -huh. From each from his ability to each to his need. So you mean you get treated the same whether you're a brain surgeon or a bat boy? Yes, no one is judged. Well, I can certainly see why you'd like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I don't like it when everybody's the same. Well, there's lots of ways people can be the same. Yeah, well, there's lots of ways people can be different. <laughs> will be playing to win a free weekend at the Elvis Presley Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Oh. <laughs> Home of Elvis's favorite dish, chicken a la king. For people who love meat tender. Okay, cover your ears, Mike. Red, you've got 30 seconds to get my camera to say this word. Plant. Plant. Yeah, all right, Winston. And go. Uh, okay, Mike, this is something that sits in your living room window and you water it once a week. Grandpa? No, no, no I, I know. This is something that hangs around the lampposts downtown. Oh, Grandma. No, no. Okay, this is like when you dig a hole in the backyard and you put something in it. Nobody proved any of that. Okay, I know, I know. Your, your uncle, you know, the big guy? Think of his job, rendering... People unconscious. No, okay, 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 I know. This withers in the cold weather. So does mine. Uh, almost out of time, Red. Yeah, okay, 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 Mike, this is so simple. What do you buy from the florist in town? Nothing. He's not a real florist. What? He's an undercover RCMP. You know, kind of like a plant. There we go. Oh, yeah. Talking animals, local animal control officer Ed Frid has brought us a wild parrot from the Brazilian coast. Actually, Red, I looked into getting a wild parrot. Uh, turns out they've got sharp, uh, unturned claws and uh, unpredictable temperaments. And sharp, untrimmed claws that are sharp and untrimmed. All right, well, claws. Well, then where, where does this one come from? Well, yeah. this was my girlfriend's. Yeah, uh, she, uh, she named it Oprah. Wow. 
obviously a talker, huh? Yeah, well, that's a common misconception. Oh. Yeah, but an uh, interesting thing about parrots, all parrots have hollow bones. What? Loser! Did you call me a loser? Just now? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing about parrots is uh, they've got these hooked beaks that are great for digging dirt and opening seeds. Ah, loser! Okay, okay, I guess you think that's funny, huh? Huh? Do you, do you think that's funny? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, <laughs> it's not me, Ed. Okay, it's it, it's the parrot. See, and 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 he's not calling you a loser. It's just a word he picked up somewhere. Ah, Ed Fred is a loser. <laughs> what? Can't commit. Emotionally immature. <laughs> Oh, I know what's happening. The parrot has picked up words and phrases that your girlfriend uses. Oh. That's the way she talks about you, huh? Huh? Oh. Oh. Well, that makes me feel better. <laughs> well, look, make it work the other way around, okay? You can use the bird to relay messages back to your girlfriend, eh? Just leave a message after the beak. <laughs> well, okay, well, what do I say? Well, it sounds to me like she's looking for a commitment, like a... I would say a marriage proposal. I think that's what the audience wants to hear. Am I right? Great. <laughs> uh, uh, honey, uh, would, would you would, would you marry me? Ah, not until you get a better job. <laughs> Depending on where you live, your town might pick up your garbage once or maybe twice a week. The problem is, they won't take it unless you haul your can all the way down to the end of the driveway. Which means your trash starts piling up faster than your excuses. Before you know it, the neighbors are complaining, your wife is embarrassed, and the raccoons have turned your yard into a drive through <laughs> Oh yeah, sure, I suppose you could take the garbage out every week. But I never call it success when I take something I don't like and find a way to do it more often. Wouldn't that be better if we could cram four weeks of trash into one can? You'd only have to take the garbage out once a month. So today on Handyman Corner, we're not just talking trash, we're talking trash compactor. I started by filling this garbage can with cement. Next step, gently remove the hardened concrete. Okay, now this whole assembly is going to do the compacting. That's why I used a compact car. <laughs> See, actually, the cement is already heavy enough. But then you hook it onto a vehicle, and that garbage is going to be feeling as much downward pressure as Moose Thompson's feet. And of course, the whole process is mechanized. Otherwise, it would require manual labor. And as you know, I have no use for any kind of manual. <laughs> I've attached the garbage can to the garage door with this hook I got off a tow truck. You can get these pretty cheap. Just slam on your brakes while you're being towed. <laughs> now all we do, toss the garbage bags into the can. Look full of you. Not even close. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh boy. Just for the record, 18 bags is the limit. life is a long list of sandwiches. Like when you're a kid, you're peanut butter and jam. Life is sweet, no crust. 
and you get to be a teenager, you're a toasted clubhouse. You got a little bacon going for you, but the girls still stay away because either they're chicken or you're a turkey. <laughs> then as a young man, you become a ham and cheese. More ham than cheese, but that will reverse as you get older. <laughs> but maybe now you've reached the not so healthy sandwich years, huh? The big fat, greasy corned beef on a Kaiser years. <laughs> Things are hanging out all over the place. <laughs> you're looking kind of rough. Uh, you've biggie-sized yourself, and <laughs> your fat content is through the roof. And if you don't start saving some bread soon, you could end up open-faced. <laughs> okay, this is when you need your wife's help. Your wife is the spoonful of coleslaw that can save your life. You be nice to her, because if she leaves, you've had the bun. <laughs> and you are way too old to be holding the pickle. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Benny VD vacuum. We came, we saw, we sucked. Well, this whole communist experiment isn't going too bad, actually. I'm getting paid for doing nothing, so it's not that much of an adjustment. <laughs> actually thinking about changing the name of the lodge to Red Green Square. Um, Uncle Red? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we might have a bit of a problem. Huh? Yeah, well, you know, under the communist system, all industry is owned by the government. Yeah. So, uh, you, know, you know, technically, uh, this show belongs to the government. Well, I'm sure they'll change their minds once they see it, Harold. <laughs> yes, but no individual is allowed to make capital gains, huh? so therefore, uh, you have to turn over all your profits from the show. What, you mean, like, for all 13 seasons? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a killer, Harold. Can you change a 20? <laughs> okay, great. Mr. Green, this is not working. Huh? What, what's the matter, Mike? You see everybody dressed in the grays and you get homesick? Huh? <laughs> no. No, it's just like when everybody owns everything, then nobody's got anything worth stealing. It's the end of the world as we know it. I'm in the same boat, Red. Everybody's after me to pump out their septics, and according to the rules, I can't charge anything, and they can't pay anything. Jeez, it's like working for your relatives. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Harold, Winston and I are quitting. When Winston's parked his truck beside my store, and for us, it's back to business as usual. No, no, yes. you can't do that. No, you can't have a pocket of capitalism right in the middle of a communist territory. Oh, it's no problem, Harold. We built a wall around our section. Yep, built it out of wrecked cars. Wow, I'd like to see that. That's a scrap iron curtain. <laughs> Walter was out behind the lodge. He wanted to do a little drywall uh, work, and he had, uh, I had the instructions there that I was folding into an airplane, and I had the plans there as well. And, uh, Walter's pretty strong. I didn't figure he'd need Just put her down on the, put on the saw. Easy now, easy, easy, Walter, easy. You're good, you're good, you're good. Oh. All right, I just fired the plane at him. Here we go. <laughs> Love gliders. Love the paper airplanes. So that was, now I'm, now I'm making a bigger one out of the actual plans, and I'm not paying a lot of attention to Walter, because look at that's a beautiful thing, and that looks kind of like the Concorde. And I made her so she curves right around, and watch yourself there. Oh, boy. <laughs> See how kind of fun that is? Walter? That's way more fun than... Now Walter's getting 90. Wait a second. It's just a big rectangular sheet that you fold into a paper airplane. And drywall is kind of a big rectangular sheet that when you score it, you can you can fold. I didn't know quite what was going on, but he's making all kinds of marks and everything. And when he actually grabbed the one side and uh, started to fold her over, I kind of got the feeling, oh, I, I think that looks, that looks kind of wing-like, doesn't it? And he, what he, he made it just an unbelievable huge drywall glider airplane there. And, <laughs> well, she is a beauty. She's, that's a, it's like the 747 of gliders there. And, let her go, and oh boy, oh boy. But hey, she's airborne, baby. Oh, beautiful, oh. She's a good, Walter, she, uh, she's, Walter, she's coming this way. Walter, Walter, where you go, where you go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, make a wish, Walter. Oh. And now I see him coming, I'm thinking, oh, if I could get him maybe to land inside the, the van, it would kind of break the fall. And I'm looking for a couple of flashlights, you know, like they use at the airport to kind of signal the big, so here we go, I got a hammer and a pipe wrench, that's gonna have to, it's gonna have to do, and he's, 
getting awful close and just, oh boy. Oh! All right, now, for you youngsters out there, it's a real important safety lesson. If someone is ever injured, your, your main job is to stay calm and get them to the hospital as quickly as possible. This is the experts portion of the program where we address those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know! <laughs> okay, uh, and here's our letter. Dear experts, my wife has a lot of female intuition. She can just look at me and know what I'm thinking. How does she do that? I never have a clue what she's been up to. Boy, I can relate to that. Yeah, especially the never having a clue part. <laughs> no. no, 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 I meant it the way that when Anne Marie looks at me, she knows exactly what I'm thinking. Women are just, they're good at that. No, it's not just women. I mean, I can tell every time somebody looks at me what they're thinking. That's the guy. <laughs> no, no, women don't have any kind of special intuition. Men give themselves away with their body language, that's all. All right, you mean like uh, walking through the door with your hands up? <laughs> oh, yeah, but no, I, I mean, like, you know, we're pretty simple machines. We're not hard to figure out. We're like bulldozers, you know? Lots of power, lots of gas. We move things from one place to another. <laughs> don't really change anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, women, they're more complicated. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're like computers, right? You can see what's going on on the screen, yeah. but you know by all the humming and whirring that there's something else going on in the background. Is that why women are so hard to understand? Well, you ever seen how big a computer manual is, Mike? Yeah, you see, women have got the, 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 they got the software, and, and they got the, the graphics package, and, and they got the, the, the huge memory banks. <laughs> That's, that's memory with an E. And, and you gotta press the right buttons or they'll freeze up on you. Yeah. Yeah, and all their dads are, they're, they're looking at them and trying to figure out whether they should get a newer model with a faster operating system or just to upgrade the one they've already got and uh, run the risk of getting into bed with yesterday's technology. No, 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 way. no, no don't no. be doing that, no. Okay, okay, so you're saying uh, that this viewer doesn't have a ghost of a chance of figuring out the whole female intuition thing because she's as complex as a computer? Yeah, if he's thinking about getting a newer model or upgrading, she'll be on to him in a port asbestos minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. You start fooling around with a woman computer, you're going to find out what boot up really means. <laughs> You know, there's an old saying, into every meal, a few vegetables may fall. Here they go now. <laughs> that was easy, but what happens if your wife's there? You know she sees red if you don't eat your greens. <laughs> well, here's a simple solution to the problem. Get yourself a rat trap and an old side view mirror you don't use anymore. <laughs> Caution, cauliflower may be closer than it appears. <laughs> now I just attach the mirror face down to the spring mount on my rat trap, see? And then when I tap the release, I'll rig her so she just comes up to 90 degrees, which will hide my veggies and make the plate look clean. David Copperfield, eat your heart out. Better yet, eat my wife's turn of casserole. Let's demonstrate this in a full dinner setting, shall we? As you can see, I've moved all my undesirables to one half of the plate, and on the other half, I can enjoy the rest of my meat entree. Mm, 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 mm. Now, I just rotate the plate so that the mirror is facing towards Bernice. And then I subtly hit the release when she's not watching, and I'm ready for dessert. <laughs> Never could keep my veggies down. Lock the door. Lock it. Lock it. I think we lost them. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, uh, we've just witnessed the collapse of our communist regime. Walker Red, I'm so sorry about this mess. Well, it wasn't really your fault here. What am I saying? <laughs> I mean, at least we got paid, right? Huh? Right. At least we got paid, right? Right. Well, well not paid in the sense of money, per se. Um, uh, not money I can put in my wife's, per se? <laughs> 
it's good. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah, each of us gets 25% off any postgraduate course we want to take. Postgraduate. <laughs> Harold, give the people what they want. <laughs> Meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead, comrade. I'll be right now. Okay. Right? <laughs> okay, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, the communist thing is over, but we can still party. Huh? <laughs> With the difference being that tonight I won't be rushing, and I'm hoping you won't be stalling. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. We have myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Pops Lodge. Keep your stick on the ice. Sit down. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I am a man, but I can change. If I have to, I guess. Okay, man, the communist thing didn't really work out so good, so I think we should go back to thinking and acting as individuals. All in favor? Opposed? That's more like it.